What's up, everybody? Blue Gabe. We also got Crystal Beachy. What's up, right here. Y'all's truly Crystal Beachy. We got Mr. Jaime. Yes, sir. Que pasa? Listo, señor. We got Mr. Paul Anderson, Jose, and they are the owner operators of El Dorado Outfitters here in Mexico. Y'all check this place out right here. Look at the, I mean, there's just dove. There's all these white wing, ring necks, whatever you want to call them. This is a feedlot, a cattle operation. See all the cows? Everywhere. This place is loaded with dove. And we're here to execute some of them. In Mexico, there's no limit. You can shoot as many as you want. And there is an overabundance of them. They're taking over these feedlots. They try to eat as much cow food as they can, which really cuts into the profit of the cattle farmers. So we're here. We got shotguns. We got bird shot. We got nothing but time. Y'all, this is about to get real, real soon. Have you seen any birds fly by? Uh, just like a lot. You guys, when we start shooting and these things start flying, it's gonna get nuts real quick. Dusted him. I got him, he's going down. Got him. As soon as you shoot one, they run and go get them. That looks like hot wire. Good job. <laughs> get him, babe. <laughs> Got his butt. Oh, he's going down. And he just crashed. Good. So I'm shooting a 12 gauge. This is one of the guns that they offer, a Beretta, which is obviously one of the best shotguns made. She's shooting the same make gun, a Beretta, but in a 20 gauge. What are you shooting? Oh, you're shooting a 12 gauge Beretta too. Yeah. These yeah. Tweety birds are about to get it. They're spooking me. There you go. Got him that second shot. Had to run him down. Oh, he's coming back for more. Oh, cleaned up. Thanks, babe. In the hay bale. <laughs> Got him. Go. Perfect shot. Uh -huh. Good shot. Oh, there you go. One more. One more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> left, left. Got that one too, babe. You're four for four right now. Good shot, babe. This is nuts, you guys, I'm telling you. I'm gonna say it one more time. We are so close to the States, it's so easy to get here. Five hours from Stewart, Florida, and we could have been duck hunting. They've got insane duck hunting, insane wild quail hunting, and amazing dove hunting that right now. I'm gonna be back for the duck hunting for sure. I killed both of them birds. That was some good shooting, Tex. We're coming back. This is now our, gonna be our second home for sure. Oh! I didn't know which way to go. I will for sure be bringing my kids back. If you're a dad and wanna take your kid on a trip of a lifetime that's safe, right here. 100% safe. You can come here. They pick you up at the airport. Like, it's like a Uber dove hunting trip. Oh yeah. That's up, Ricky. Oh, he's going in the tree. There's so many wounded birds that land in that tree, but then they eventually fall out. Watch it. Nice. I got both of them. 
All right, baby, are you about ready? Do you just see how far I hit that bird from? Right here, right here, dos amigos. I got six more shells and then I'm done. I got the prettiest camera girl on the planet right now too, I can tell you, right here. No, a little bit too close. Whole bunch of them to the rod. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh. I didn't know which way to go. I'm new. I don't know what to do. Nice shot. Boop. Oh boy. Oh. Did I get that? Yeah, I got one of them. Oh. No, 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 no. I'm gonna let him see that. Hey, dog, try to get one. <laughs> <laughs> you guys check out that that's a white winged dove here in mexico the cool yeah. thing about this is the more hunters you have the better they'll actually fly because right now there's only two groups of us did you just see that there's only two groups of us so the birds will just go down there and land if you had like 10 or 15 hunters it would be nuts you guys we have made some piles huh these guys are working their butt off. Jose's coaching Crystal a little bit. Look at that, that's that's one real good pile. And we got a really good pile right here too. There's more coming to the left. Look at all, all Look at the coming birds coming at straight at you. Wait for them. Too far, too far. Right there, right there. Good shot. Good I'll shot. go get him for you. Oh, she's shooting more. Perfect. I don't think it's possible to have much more fun than this with your clothes on. What do you think? No, there's no way. Oh, oh there's a bunch. Good shot. I don't know what happened to Crystal, but all of a sudden she's dusting them. I actually, I'm taking y'all for a quick walk. I got one of the Eurasian doves down over here in the, in the cow pen. We're gonna go get him. So all these cattle you see are yearlings pretty much. They come from pastures where they take them off their mama, they bring them here, they feed them a whole lot more food than they would get in the wild. And that's why they call it a feedlot. When they leave here, unfortunately for them, they'll be headed to the slaughterhouse where they'll become our steaks. Now I know, oh yeah, right here, here he is. We were shooting way over there and I shot this bird and I guess I heart shot him and he came all the way here. This is what we call a ring neck in Florida. They call it a Eurasian dove here. It doesn't have the same rules that our white wing doves. This is actually a non-native bird in Florida. And we can shoot these with pellet guns. So a lot of the dairies, these birds will stack up all around there. At home, we're gonna take our pellet guns and go do nothing but a ring neck dove hunt with the pellet guns. Right over your head, straight up. Dang, she dusted another one. She's letting it rip right now. She's finding her stride, isn't she? This is another awesome thing about El Dorado. Not only do they supply the guns and the ammo, you get your own dove bucket, open it up like this, and it'll have whatever you like to drink in it. I personally like Mountain Dew. And if you watched my last video, you saw me praise Mr. Paul when he was in uh, Texas picking us up from the airport. Before he picked us up, he stopped and got me a case of Mountain Dew. Because you can't get Mountain Dew in Mexico. He got that just for me. And if you come here, he'll get you whatever you want, I assure you. I'm gonna start calling you Killa. Killa Manila. Good shot. <laughs> Stoning him too. I mean, she's just knocking him down. Now, if you're wondering why I keep telling you about this place and why you should come here, Jose can't take it. When a big flock comes over, he's gonna shoot. I've been looking for a place like this my entire life. I didn't wanna go down south and fly for 12 hours. I wanted somewhere close. And she just folded another one. I wanted somewhere close, just like what we just found. Oh. 
You got one of them for sure. If you enjoy eating wild game, we're going to do something that I've never done before on this channel. When we clean these birds, their heart is about that big, but they're really good to eat. We're going to take about 25 of them and put them on little skewers and cook them over mesquite wood, like straight up how you would have done back in the day. If we were camping in Mexico, we'd make us a little mesquite fire and cook some hearts. We'll eat the rest of them too, but we're eating dove heart in this video. All right, I'm gonna show you all how to clean them. You literally just put your thumb up under their breast, get it in there, and this is what we're after. This is what Beachy wanted for dinner. Dove heart. We're gonna get about 25 of these. They clean all these birds. Every ounce of this will be utilized, but we're definitely utilizing the hearts. Then you just take it, pop it a pop like that. Take the skin. And all you have is one beautiful cleaned dub breast. Clip the wings off, grill that with some jalapenos and some bacon. Woo, doggy is good. All right, so we changed things up today. The guides have been working their butt off. Jose and Paul have been working their butts off. See all the guys over here? It's super hot. We decided instead of bird hunting, we were gonna go do something a little unique. And I'm about to let Crystal show you what we found. We've only been out here for like maybe an hour and a half. We've been walking right here, you know, anywhere where there's exposed sand and these ditch banks like this. This is my first ever arrowhead. Check that out. It's a bird point. It's pretty perfect though. Maybe this at one point killed a turkey. A Rio Grande? Yeah. A Mexican Rio Grande. This is probably the best one that we found. One of the guys found this. That's like a spearhead. It's pretty. Oh, it's I definitely the prettiest one. can see the color one. on that. Can you see yeah. the color? Red and yellow. That's a nice one right there. We found several that are broken off right here. Like these are probably the most perfect ones. Look at that. It looks like the Ace of Spades. This one was really Ooh, unique too. Good. Yep, that's it. No, nope, this that one, one too. That's yeah, the very that's, first one that Paul that found. That literally, Paul found this one. He walked up, found this one, pointed it out to Crystal. Then like a minute was... later, I looked right around like a foot over and we found this one. He found this one within like five minutes though. It was fast. <laughs> <laughs> I found this. It's That's like river rock. And it's definitely something because... Oh, another piece just right there. Yeah. So look at these three right here definitely something to it they're river rock with other stuff matched up to it like look how neat that is and then you got this crazy looking contraption I'm definitely bringing these home for Luke he absolutely loves rocks and this is the material that most of these arrowheads are made out of I don't know what the name of it is but that's it nope oh nope show him your jawbone uh oh Paul found this molar to something. That's a big molar. And then I found this little jawbone that has this crazy looking tooth coming out. Let's see a fang. I don't know if it's to, we thought it might be a chipmunk. You guys come in here close. Now this was Crystal Beachy's idea. Do you see that? That's all dove heart. And right here we have the dove, bre the dove breast. I'm gonna do this super simple. A lot of people like to wrap them in bacon and put all kinds of stuff on there. We're gonna do it nice and plain. Some salt. And some garlic salt. We're filming with the phone right now because in just a second we're gonna walk outside in the grill and it's a little bit dark out there. The reason I'm doing it like this is I want to be able to taste the flavor of this meat with nothing else other than a little bit of salt and a little bit of garlic. Let's go put it on the grill. Before we start grilling this meat, I got to give a huge thank you to Jaime. This mm -hmm. guy right here. You're welcome. He's mm -hmm. like Amazon Prime. You need it, he's got it, and it will be here very soon. And to Ricky, this is like the Energizer Bunny here in Mexico. <laughs> this dude, these two combined, if you needed to go to the moon, they'd get out there 
and build a rocket ship and have you up there by tonight. Come here, Jose. Quit being shy. Jose, Jose is the, definitely the man with the plan. He's one of the owners of El Dorado. He's been a friend of mine for four years. I've been wanting to come back here for four years, and here we are. And it's been a trip of a lifetime. This, like, we didn't even shoot dub today. We shot so many yesterday. Today, we wanted to just relax, unwind, spend some time. We did some stuff this evening. We took catfish lines and put them out in Lake Guerrero. Nobody that we know of has ever done it. We're going to wake up tomorrow morning and see if we got a catfish. Come in here. Now, look at this grill. It is super hot, just like we want it. We want to cook these dub breasts medium rare. This is mesquite wood, right? Yes, mesquite. Sir. mesquite oh, yeah. Now the hearts, we're gonna only put them on there for just a second. So while we're waiting on eating dinner, right here in the lodge, I know in the fancy lodge, we got three birds. They've been frozen, but these are three of the birds that we killed just the other day. And they're three of the birds that you can expect to kill here at El Dorado. Explain the difference, Paul, you're on the clock. So this is a Eurasian dove, a uh, collared dove. It's an invasive species, obviously from Eurasia. Uh, was let go 10, 12, 15 years ago, and now they're all over the continent. This is an extremely light colored one. Normally they're about the same color as this, and if you look, pardon, it's frozen, but if you look there, you can see the collar. It's right on the back. That's a gorgeous one. Yeah. We have them in Florida too. You don't see them this light ever, ever. And then, so this is a morning dove. Uh, just like 99% of the people in North America are gonna see, uh, it's, probably the most popular dove in North America. As I don't we, think he's gonna see any more mornings though. No, he's not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not anytime soon. Um, so this is a white wing. You can see it has the white wing. Um, this is a pretty mature one as well. Uh, you'll see those everywhere from South Texas, even mid Texas, um, across the Eastern seaboard, uh, the Gulf Coast a little bit on the way down to the northern part of South America, Venezuela, Nicaragua uh, is a huge wintering ground. I would say they go all the way down to Venezuela, Colombia though. This is the bird we came here to hunt, right? Mm -hmm. The white wing, this time of the year. Yeah. But then you said, what time of the year for the morning doves? For, uh, so right now we have some uh, native morning dove and then they migrate south along with the, with the white wings. But the, the heaviest population that we get is uh, from, we'll say, late October, November, all the way to February. And then in, in around March, they start migrate back to the States. So that, oh. that migration that we get from the States is like November. And, and you will expect a lot of morning doves on your hunts. Yeah, and Florida is just the same. And I'm sure Kentucky is too. Everybody has a population of morning doves that don't migrate, but then there's a ton of doves that do migrate everywhere, sort of like ducks now too. Yeah. So this is a Eurasian, a morning dove, and a white wing. And we shot the ever-loving mess out of them. A lot of white wings. Is your shoulder still sore? No, I feel great. What about this though? I want you three's opinion. So these are pros, like Jose's <laughs> been doing this his whole life, Paul's been in the bird business, your whole well, since you were 16, right? And about just so we remember uh, or don't forget is that we we do have a pigeon oh, yeah. here in Mexico, it's a red billed pigeon and it's twice as big as the white wing. We saw a couple, we couldn't get them, but uh, they're there, so. they're a tree. Oh, you yeah. know what, my favorite part about this weekend is we got his, his. Uh, accent and then her accent and when you get her strong country accent and his strong Mexican accent <laughs> these two right here he gets to making fun of her and it's absolutely when he talks in beachy slang it's it's like for the books all right y'all dig in and try a piece let me get a little dove fingers on here yeah the hearts are for crystal ready come ah oh, Jaime come here I want you to try it Jaime right here he's the He's the boss. That's uh, pretty good. So, tell us what you think. Medium you like rare. the hearts? Yes. Most people overcook their dough. That's perfect. That's as good as any steak you'll eat. Yeah. That's so good. Mm -hmm. Just simple. You guys, you don't need jalapeno and cheese and bacon. 
You don't need barbecue sauce. Just cook it medium rare on a grill or even in a pan. A little bit of olive oil, just salt, a little bit of light garlic, and dove will be some of the best meat you will ever eat. Oh, if it's not red on the inside, it's overcooked. A hundred percent. And don't judge us for touching the raw, the cooked meat after the birds. That's just us. That's just how we grew up. A little popcorn heart. I mean, even that's amazing. Yeah. So when we're cleaning dove and snipe at home, the way we breast them out, normally the heart stays intact to the meat, like to the breast, and you cook them, and that's just a little delicacy. They're good, huh? Oh, they're, they're great. Yeah, they're great. Awesome. Thank you very much for hosting us. Thank you. We will definitely be back for sure. Oh, yeah. Are you coming yeah, back? I'm coming back. Are you going to hide in a suitcase I if we try to leave like you? I think they like us a little bit. They do like us a little bit. I hope yeah, so. we've had fun. Fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> fingers <laughs> crossed with the catfish. Yeah. yeah. We're going to make that happen. Oh, yeah. We're going to make that happen for sure. So they have a whole bunch of big steaks. It's our last night here. We're going to turn the camera off and enjoy each other's company, talk, tell hunting stories, and some pictures. If you haven't watched my first two videos from this series, I'll put them in the link in the description below. I did a monster crawl fishing video and another dove video, just like the one you watched, but in a different place. Go check it out. That's it for this one though. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Check out El Dorado. You've already seen their website a bunch of times. Click on it, go to it, Google it, come here, hunt. You will have the time of your life. Look at that. Should they come here? They should come here. You guys, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you too. Let's look at the dinner one more time. Y'all eat your hearts out.